We are done. Oh, you are recording. Yes. I'm here yeah. with my students. Yes, yeah, these are my students. Dolores, Evelyn. My students uh, are on uh, WebEx platform, another platform. They are not oh, online, okay. but oh, they, they can see everything. Okay, good. Uh, how many you have? You said six students? Uh, no, 60 students, uh, 25, 20 students. Oh, 20, oh excellent. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you. Um, you too. Well, it's it's still morning for me, but good afternoon for uh, you in Argentina. Is everyone in Argentina? No, from Romania. Romania, wow. Yes, yes. Cool. Evelyn and Dolores are in Argentina. Argentina. Yes, Where? Evelyn and Dolores are in Argentina. Copy, dați drumul la microfon și salutați odată, vă rog. Hai să vă aud. Okay, so we have Argentina and we have Argentina. Romania. <laughs> so we're all yes. over the world today. <laughs> we are so far. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, my name is Ranger Simone and I'm standing here in a backyard. <laughs> I am not in Joshua Tree National Park because the park is closed right now. So even us as workers here in Joshua Tree, uh, we are not allowed to be um, working in the park. So I am in a backyard. <laughs> That's why you see the gate and houses behind me. Um, a little bit about Joshua Tree. It's located in California. So here's our map of the United States. This is all the U.S. Uh, and we're here on the um, west coast by the Pacific Ocean. And Joshua Tree is very far south in California. It's very, it's close to the bottom of the state. Um, so it's a national park, one of many national parks across the country. And since we are so far south down here, we are a desert park. So a desert uh, is a very hot, dry place usually, um, and it can also be very cold. So last week we had four days of rain. It rained every day and it was cold and it actually even snowed a little just last week. So deserts can be very hot. It's warming up today um, or they can be very cold. Uh, so extreme temperatures. Uh, we also get less than 10 inches of rain a year. So anywhere in the whole world that gets less than um, oh, inches, <laughs> uh, not sure what that is in um, centimeters of rain a year is considered a desert. And we have very uh, dry soil. So our ground, our ground is very sandy. You can see it's Kind of what you would imagine. Little sandy sand and rocks. <laughs> um, are there any sort of desert areas in Argentina or Romania? Do you have any? You can either speak up or write it in the chat. Yes, yes. Anyone can answer. <laughs> da, deci copii, orice doriți, îmi trimiteți pe chat, da? Yes, they know. They know, okay. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm going to go back. I'm going Hold to type on here. Okay, yeah. Um, oh, perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, I can see the chat there. Any, any, uh, one want to say anything? <laughs> any, any deserts? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Ooh. Sorry. My phone. <laughs> Sorry. No, we don't have any. No deserts. Okay, yeah, so your, your environment might be a little different um, than what we have here. Okay. 
So here's again an up close. So remember uh, Josh Tree National Park, it's a protected place. It's here in the Southern area of California. So again, this is a map very close. So we're this big green area right here. So we're pretty close about two hours from Los Angeles. So Los Angeles, the big city is over here. And then over here on this side are the different states, uh, Nevada and Arizona. And so we're kind of right in the middle between in the state. Um, and we have Mexico to the south. So only two hours from all different uh, um, locations, borders of the park. No. Okay, so a know. national park in the United States is represented by this symbol right here. This is the arrowhead. I have it on my shirt right here. Um, it's on our jackets. And this symbol is very important because each one of these sort of icons in the overall symbol represents something of importance, uh, something uh, that we protect and preserve. So we, we want to keep make sure it's, um, it's still the same for a long time. So if you visit Joshua Tree National Park uh, today, or if you visit in the future, let's say you visit uh, this national park next year, and you come back 20 years, we want, we hope that it will look about the same that there's not a lot of um, um, roads, there's not a lot of houses, there's nothing in the park. It's, it's a protected piece of natural land. So we protect our animals, we protect the plants, we protect mountains and valleys. We also protect clean water and air, and we protect the past. So the shape of the symbol we call an arrowhead so we protect things from long ago. So from things where people lived on the land long ago, or in the United States, there are certain national park sites like the Statue of Liberty or um, the National Mall in Washington, DC. So the um, big monuments there, we protect those because they represent something of importance in the US, um, United States history. So that's why it's this shape. Uh, we call that again an arrowhead. <laughs> okay, so that's a little bit about our national parks across the US. There are about four, over 400 places in all of the US that are represented by this symbol. So there are a lot of places that we have set aside to protect and preserve. So it stays the same or looks the same or feels the same as it, it has in the past. But since I mentioned Josh Tree is a desert park, uh, this is a Joshua tree behind me right here. It's growing right here. These Joshua trees, so they don't just grow in the national park. They grow in people's backyards. Uh, they grow um, in the Mojave Desert, which starts here and moves north. So it goes up towards Nevada and a little bit into Utah, tiny little corner in Utah. So these trees have a big range. They can grow um, in many places uh, in this kind of the Southwest region. Um, the inside of a Joshua tree looks like this. It's got this sort of fibrous inside, right? It's kind of got hair furs right here. Um, and its leaves are the green leaves you can see right there. So I'll go up to the tree so you can see it a little better. Here we go. So you can see those green leaves growing. Here we go. We'll go this one right here. So you can see them up close. So these are living leaves. It looks like last year it had a flower. So this is the stalk that um, grows when it's going to flower. So all the flowers have fallen off. <laughs> these are the petals from the flower last year. And so sometimes it grows fruit um, and that fruit will uh, be kind of like a big pod. Um, and inside the fruit are Joshua tree seeds. This one doesn't look like it's, um, uh, doesn't look like it has any fruit right now, but 
right here, right here, it looks like it's about to start to have another bud or flower, which is really exciting. <laughs> and here are its leaves right here. And again, when the leaves die, so instead of falling to the ground, the leaves die and fold back. So you see these brown, these are its dead leaves and they're protecting the trunk. They're protecting this part of the tree. Because it gets hot here, it needs some sunscreen, some sun protection. So here are the dead leaves falling back and protecting the trunk right here. And so desert plants, they need to store water. So they store water for long periods of time. So they have that nice, um fibrous inside so they can store that water for a long time cactus can do the same thing so there's a cactus here i'll come back down so here's a cactus we have flowers this time of year so this cactus is storing water in those green pads and right now since it's springtime it's flowering <laughs> very excited to see that um and again, you can kind of see how the ground is sandy. And this is that same cactus right here that does not have a flower, you can see. So all those little dots you see are tiny clusters of spines. So I don't like touching this one because it, it gets stuck into you and they're really hard to get out. <laughs> so here's that sandy soil. Here's the start of uh, some of our other, other flowers. You can see this right here is another plant. Um, it's gonna have a yellow flower when it, it gets uh, hopefully a little warmer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we have more, we have a lot of different types of plants besides cactus growing in the desert. This time of year, we get a lot of flowers, a lot of yellow flowers, um, and they bloom right now in the spring because in the winter, there's been some rain and then it starts to warm up in the spring and they can come out of the ground. They have a nice flower. And then when it gets too hot in the summer, they begin to die and their seeds go back in the ground. And then the same cycle happens uh, next year. So usually in the spring, we begin to see a lot of animals come out. A lot of the flowers are blooming. Uh, there's pockets of water from winter rain, so the animals have um, water to drink. Uh, and one of the most common animals we, we hear at night, at sunrise and sunset, is our coyotes. So we have coyotes here. Um, let's see, do you have coyotes where you live? You can say yes or no, thumbs yep. up. <laughs> no. No, no coyotes. No. Oh, okay. Do you have an animal that looks like a coyote? Yes, fox. Oh, you have fox. Yeah, okay. We have foxes too. It's like a or fox. dog. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or a dog, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have... Um... This is a combination of fox and dog. No? Oh, a coyote? No, it's its own, um, its own species. So um, it's... Um, it looks very similar to a dog, <laughs> uh, but it's a little different. It's bigger than a dog. Um, and they um, make a different sound. So instead of a bark, they do a howl. Uh, and this is a coyote fur. So this is its um, pelt. So this is just the fur of the coyote. Uh, and you can see it's kind of a, like a light brown color. Um, with some black, um, and this coyote, coyotes uh, are this kind of light color because having this light color helps them stay cooler in the summer months. When it's really hot in the summer, um, if they were a dark brown, they'd be absorbing a lot of heat. They'd be very hot. But they kind of have this kind of lighter brown. And it's the same color as the sand or the background. Um, which again helps them camouflage. They blend in well to the environment and um, stay cool in those summer months. So what do you think our coyotes eat? What do they hunt? 
Any guesses? <laughs> what do you think they hunt? <laughs> do they eat uh, plants? Yes or no? Plants? Um, oh, perfect. Yeah, what do they eat? <laughs> yeah, they can eat plants. Uh, do they eat other animals? Yes, no? Yes, yeah, they yeah, definitely eat other eaters. Um, they hunt our jackrabbits. So we have these uh, bunnies. <laughs> they have these big ears right here. <laughs> and jackrabbits use those ears. They use here, these ears. They can... Um, release heat from their ears so they can cool their bodies down and they the heat leaves from their ears to help them cool down the big ears also help them hear well so they can hear predators or they can hear the coyotes coming uh, with the help of their ears we also have cotton tails so little bunnies so we have our jackrabbit these with the big ears and then a cotton tail bunny. So they have this white tail right here. And they have smaller ears. So they so, don't have to. Mm -hmm. So cute. <laughs> yes, we have lots of bunnies. <laughs> a lot of bunnies, especially in the spring. <laughs> right now we see lots of these animals. Okay. Um, another mammal. So we have, um, we have a lot of mammals in Joshua Tree National Park. Um, and one of our bigger mammals, we don't, a desert does not have a lot of big animals because it's hot and if you're a big animal, uh, you need to drink a lot of water to um, stay alive. <laughs> and so that's why we don't have too many larger mammals. But one of the few that has adapted to survive in the desert is a big horn sheep. Mm. Yeah, so we don't see them in our neighborhoods like where I'm standing today. But if you were to um, visit the mountains or the big rocks, see these large animals. This is a male or a boy with the big curl horn. And the female or the girl is standing on the rock there. She's got a much shorter horn. And so they climb up on these big rocks that we have in the park um, in the horn. Looks like this. This is a male horn, so you can see it's really big and heavy. <laughs> and I have the female. The girl is much smaller. So you can see the difference between the two horns. The, um, male, the males use their horns these right here, usually for fighting other uh, males. So they want to protect their herd. So they, <laughs> a male is usually in charge of a big group <laughs> of females. And the females um, have a smaller horn because they're not doing a lot of the fighting. Um, usually it's the males. But they have horns to protect themselves from a predator. So that's an animal that eats them. And that would be the mountain lion. So we have these mountain lions, these big animals here that hunt bighorn sheep. But bighorn sheep uh, find protection uh, when they are on the rocks. So I mentioned we had those large boulders that those bighorn sheep climb on. So they climb up high here on these rocks to stay protected from um, the mountain lions or any sort of bighorn sheep. Yeah, so this type of rock is very rough, it's not smooth. So the rock that you saw in the picture, it's very um, rough, lots of friction. I don't know if you can tell that it, it's not smooth like what a uh, rock you would see in a river. Um, this rock <laughs> has um, exposed to the weather, to the different, to the rain, to the snow, to wind, um, to plants growing in it. So it's got a lot of um, weathering that happens along the rock. So here again. Yeah. yeah. So it's very rough, rough on the fingertips. <laughs> and 
our bighorn sheep horns are actually made of keratin. <laughs> this horn right here, if you look at your fingertips, this material of your fingertip is the same material as this horn. So they don't really break down um, in the environment. <laughs> okay. Are there any questions so far? Oh, is that interesting? Excellent. Yeah. Do you have an area in um, Argentina or Romania uh, that is protected for the natural, for the mountains, for rivers? Yes, uh, we have forests? protected yes, areas, uh, mainly in, in the north. And part of the south, we have also national parks that are yeah. protected. And is Patagonia in Argentina? Yes, it's Patagonia mm -hmm. in the south, exactly. Yeah, so that's a big area of land. Mm -hmm. Protected so the animals have a yes. place to yes. be um, with activity, yes, wildlife all around. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, so Joshua Tree National Park is, is kind of like that, where it's a big piece of land that animals can enter. There's no gate, there's no fence around it. So animals can move around and as a park ranger, we don't really take care of them. <laughs> and so if an animal gets sick or um, gets hit by a car, it, we, we don't take care of it too much. Um, we want them to be wild. They can go wherever they want. Um, yes, we have so another same. one of- oh, In yes. Romania, we have the same uh, reservation, uh, national reservation uh, for, uh, uh, bisons and for uh, bears in uh, mountains, we uh, visited uh, with our students this uh, um, one uh, reservation. Cum s-a numit copii? Reservația noastră? Cum s-a numit? Yeah, oh, excellent. Noi la uși. Cum s-a numit? Zarnești Reservation. For bears. For bears, yeah, that's for really bears, cool. Yes. And uh, with bisons uh, in, uh, nu știu unde este, in, uh, in our country. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, and so we, another animal that we have here in the desert that is um, uh, protected, uh, that is protected with a lot, uh, with laws, with a, with a rule, um, is the desert tortoise. So we don't yeah. have a lot of these anymore in the wild, either about, um, let's see, there's a couple of thousand probably in Joshua Tree. So this is one of my favorite animals is, is our tortoise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, so it li tortoise, yeah, it, it lives on land, so it doesn't need water. It's different than a turtle, which needs to be in water or be near water to survive. Tortoises can go a long time uh, without drinking water. So they can store water in their, in their stomachs, in their bladders for over almost a year. So that's a long time they can go without drinking water. Mm -hmm. This is a tortoise shell. So they get to be about this big. This is an adult. So they don't, don't get too uh, much bigger than this. Um, this is a, a male or a boy tortoise, <laughs> uh, and I can tell kind of by the, this horn right here. So we call this a gular horn, or, or this part of the tortoise is usually longer on a male than a female, and it usually it has a bigger tail. <laughs> um, tortoises, again, are this sort of camouflage color, uh, so they blend in really really well to the environment. They look like the rock. They look like a rock uh, when you are walking around and hiking. Um, and they have really strong legs. So they use their really strong legs right here and their sharp claws for digging burrows. So we, a burrow is a hole in the ground created by an animal. So in the, a lot of our animals in the desert dig burrows or use other burrows to stay warm in the, in the cold winter or, and to cool down in the summer. So when it gets too hot, 
tortoises uh, can get very hot, <laughs> they will use their burrow to cool down. Because when they go underground, it's, a, it's about the same temperature. Underground stays consistently about the same temperature. Um, and so right now, actually this time of year, is the only time we begin to see our tortoises, or one of the few times we see them, uh, because they're leaving their burrow, they're, they're looking for food. Tortoises love to eat those pink flowers I showed you. They love yellow flowers. They love green flowers. Um, they're trying to find uh, as much uh, as much flowers to eat as possible, or because um, the flowers also have water in them. They can store that water in their bodies for a long time. Um, and this is a baby tortoise. <laughs> it's very tiny. Oh, and cute. <laughs> Yeah. So when a tortoise is born, its shell right here is actually very soft. It's not hard like a, um adult tortoise shell. And so when they get bigger, eventually their shell begins to harden. So baby tortoises are in lots of danger. There's a lot of animals that want to eat a little baby tortoise um, because it's a lot of food for a, a bird. Um, so tortoises have to, they're kind of trying to find ways to protect themselves, uh, dig burrows, stay uh, safe for many of their first couple of years of their life. <laughs> um, so we have, we have a lot of different reptiles. So other common reptiles, we have our lizards and snakes. Um, we also have scorpions, tarantulas. Wow. Uh, different um, insects, uh, but we also have a lot of birds um, that migrate through. And one of our, our common birds we do see often is the roadrunner. Roadrunner. Yes. Roadrunner, yeah. So this bird you might see in like a cartoon. Uh, it runs fast uh, and it, it eats prey or it, it catches its food. Um, from the ground. So the road runner likes to eat lizards and snakes and scorpions. It's trying to eat uh, any sort of insect that is lives on the ground. That's where it likes to hunt. It's got a really sharp beak so it can eat um, bugs and insects. <laughs> Again, here's a road runner. I think they can run up to 35 miles per hour. So very fast in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, but the probably the most common bird, one of the more common ones we see, is a quail. Let's see if I can find a quail. Here is a quail. Here we go. Yes, it's wonderful. This is a quail, so it's got this little notch on top so we can tell um, what type of bird it is. And quails tend to eat more like nuts and berries and seeds. Uh, they have a smaller beak, so their mouth is used for eating some smaller stuff. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> and like I mentioned, we do have a lot of, um, we have six types of rattlesnakes. So... So our snakes are very well camouflaged, so they blend in well to the environment. You can see this snake here, um, and they're the only venomous things. So they're the only thing that could hurt you, uh, or one of the few things that could hurt you if it be you. But since they're wild animals, we don't touch them um, uh, as they uh, slither around. Um, we also have one another type of rosy boa so many different types of snakes a lot of people associate or think of the desert uh, with these reptiles so um, snakes and lizards uh, and people are very afraid of these animals but really the animals are afraid of us as people we are much bigger um, and since they are wild uh, we have to leave them alone we never touch them yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, and 
Um, like I mentioned, Josh Tree National Park is in the Mojave Desert and also the Colorado Desert. So we're made up of two deserts. So we have a very unique landscape. Um, part of the desert we can't see today, but I have a picture of, is our color. So we have a really cool cactus garden. This is called a Choya cactus, and it's all of these plants are growing together. Um, I'm going to see if I can try to show you a Choya. Um, hopefully our connection stays strong. You can see we're getting some grasses up right now. Um, okay, so you can kind of tell out there. This neighborhood we have where um, just native, these are all natural plants that want to grow here and people are not building on this land. It's just all natural. And, and that's another common plant is our creosote right there. All right. Um, does anyone have any questions so far? Question, my dear. Tare, Andrea, spune tu tare, te rog. Andrea, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. <laughs> Andrea, tare. There's some fuzz. I'm not yes. sure if someone has feedback, but okay. Oh, that's better. Any questions? My ziua data, Andrea, te rog, te Nu se aude deloc? Nu, nu, repetă tu. Da, mai ziua data, Andrea, te aud eu, te rog, că n-am înțeles ce ai spus. Zi. Dai, is one of... Dai, Andrea, is one of your animals in danger? Now in Jurpa Park, you correct? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. So one, the tortoise. This tortoise is endangered. So we do have a few animals that are endangered, and the desert tortoise is one of them. So yeah. Yes. Thank you. And the, another child uh, wants to know: Do you? Uh, do you have COVID-19 in your country? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's why we're at home. I'm actually at a home instead of in um, the work. I'm not in the park. The park is closed right now. Thank you. And I can tell you our weather today. So you can see it's really nice out. Uh, it is about, let's see, it's probably about uh, 19C. Yes, thank you. So nice and warm. Yes, <laughs> I'm fortunate. Hi, I'm How many species of trees do you have? Oh, good question. Um, so we have only one type of Joshua tree right here, and that is called Yucca brevifolia. Um, but there are two types, maybe three, but two uh, different types of Joshua tree that um, another type grows in um, a little bit to our north. So here, let me get a map here real fast. So here we are in the United States. So Joshua Tree National Park is here. And so we have a, Joshua, a type of Joshua tree that grows here. But then in this area too, Joshua trees grow and there's another species of Joshua tree that grows there. It's a little smaller. All right, the branches are a little smaller, but they have a lot more branches. Um, but in general, I don't know how exactly how many types of trees we have. We have pinion pine trees, we have oak trees, um, we have cottonwood trees. Uh, I would say maybe 10, to 20 different species of tree, different types of tree, or tree-like uh, plants. <laughs> Not too many, though. Um, 
a lot of shrubs, like bushes, um, instead of big, tall trees. Gentle fish or kopi, no? Mm -hmm. no. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Very. We have to visit Joshua Park when... Yes, you can come visit when COVID has passed. <laughs> It's a good time of year to come right now. The springtime, no. March and April it's, are very nice. It is impossible mm -hmm. now. Yes, it's not. We want uh, to travel, but uh, we don't have. Only virtual travel. Only virtual, yes. 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 Mm -hmm. yes. I travel around nature, but yes, we come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Maybe next year or two years. Yes. Yes. Now. I hope. We hope. I hope. We hope. <laughs> we hope everything's all right. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, thank you so much for oh, coming, virtually oh, coming here too. today. We really yes, um, like talking to your students and um, I want to encourage them when, when the time is right to go and just visit their, um, their local nature, their natural areas. It sounds like you already went on a 